I used to love making music. Then I didn't want to make music at all. And I was like, oh my God, maybe I've just lied to myself all this time. What if I never really liked making music? Like all this like stuff that really isn't who I am at all. So weird. Our minds are like, they're like science projects. We are so fragile and so small and so weird. Like our brains can literally just be in like tilted over to being really good or really bad like at any moment and that is scary. The very moment that sparked this song was when I was in Horten, my hometown, and I was visiting my mom because I was completely dysfunctional when the pandemic hit. Like I thought I was gonna die from a tumor every single day. So I was in my room and I was just making music to kind of try to get my, I don't know, mind off my own mind in a way. My process in general when making music is just like starting out in my room and playing around with a bunch of cool sounds, seeing if I can find like a cool vibe or like a DNA. Like I feel like the, the best songs, they have like a really strong song DNA so they can stand on their own. Like they don't, they don't even have to be in a bigger body of work because they just say like they have so much emotion. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I call it a song DNA. I'm running low on serotonin. Chemical imbalance got me twisting things. Stabilize with medicine, but there's no depth to these feelings. Serotonin is a hormone in our body that regulates our mood. It, it keeps your body uh, stable. While I was writing, I was like talking about like receptors because like serotonin is something that is received by different receptors in your brain. And if your receptors don't work properly, that's why they can't take the serotonin and stuff like that. So I was like, really, I was trying to like geek, like nerd a little bit on like, what am I actually saying right now? The line chemical imbalance got me twisting things is kind of a result of running low on serotonin because I feel like for the longest time, I've just been, I don't know, I've just had such like a weird state of mind and I just feel like my head just twists absolutely everything that happens around me and I just feel like nothing that I feel is ever like something that I've is real even like and even like my own thoughts I feel like I have to question my own thoughts all the time dig deep can't hide from the corners of my mind I'm terrified of what's inside some thoughts just like keep, are like really hard to push away. And it's like when you push them away, you interact with them. So therefore you can't push them away. So it's like, that's like, you know, if you have a scary thought and you're, you're, you're thinking of something that scares you and then you're like, no, I don't want to think about this. Then you're interacting with that thought. And then you're kind of in this like evil circle. I just can't hide from myself because like, I just feel like I'm this like little, like, I don't know, weird thing and that my brain is like overlooking me almost. And that even, even if I like dig a hole in my brain and like try to hide somewhere, like I'm, I'm like, I just can't hide anywhere. I've been so scared of myself, like for the past 10 years. I get intrusive thoughts, like cutting my hands off, like jumping in front of a bus, like how do I make the stop? I think what's scary about intrusive thoughts is that they feel so real. At least for me, I just feel like I want to do them and and that I I'm, I have to do them. If, if not, I'm going to like, I don't know, lose my shit or something. Let's say I'm out walking and then I feel like I get this like urge to like jump in front of this bus. And then I feel like I'm, I have to like battle myself and that battle is like really, really hard. Um, and so they're just scary because they feel so real. And, and I mean, I've also had, you know, intrusive thoughts about uh, you know, hurting people I love. And that's like, yo, what the fuck is happening? Like, why do I want, like, why am I scared of like losing control and like picking up an ax? My therapist said that intrusive thoughts are really scary because they're usually the opposite of what you really want in life or like the opposite of like who you are as a person. So like, if you get like a thought of hurting someone, it's because you love that person so much and you would never want to do that. And you're so scared of that person actually getting hurt in general in life. So it's like, that's why they're so scary because it's like, they're not you. When it feels like my therapist hates me, please don't let me go crazy. I think therapy is really important because 
we all have a mental health, whether if it's like a good one or a bad one. So like, I think it's weird how we've kind of like, oh, if you go to like, if you go to therapy, it's like automatically, like you're mentally ill, but you, I feel like we should normalize going to therapy, even like if you're mentally stable, because then you get to, you know, keep that stability and sort of prevent any type of, you know, mental illness in the future. You know, my mom wouldn't like, when I was younger, she didn't want to like she was noticing that I had like a bunch of weird fears. Like I thought I was gonna, gonna like clog the toilet. I was really scared of like, you know, flushing the toilet. I was really scared of like going to the bathroom. I was really scared of swallowing food. I had so many like weird stuff I was really scared of. And she she was like, should I take her to like some, like, should I, she, ah, no, she's just like a kid. I went to therapy. I've gone to therapy since I was 17. Cause then I was at a really low point in my life. I had to end my relationship with my past, last therapist because I felt like she hated me. And I just felt like everything I said was really annoying her. And I just felt like I was a burden to my therapist, even though I paid like $150 for one session. I don't talk to my friends about these things either, which is kind of weird because I don't know, it's it's a very, I don't know, I feel like we should be talking about, you know, feeling like my therapist hates me and we should be talking about shit like that. Put me in a field with daisies, my not work, but I'll take a maybe. I guess like put me in a field with daisies, my not work, but I'll take a maybe. It just feels like a, like a last resort. Like I've tried everything. So why not just put me in a place that's beautiful and maybe that will do some good. Uh, been breaking daily, but only me can save me. So I'm capitulating, crying like a fucking baby. It's like an image of like, like me in bed. Sorry, I'm not very flexible. Like this, just like really, just like crying and, and sort of like giving in on all the bad shit in my life. I was spiraling, like I was like going downhill like mentally. And then I had a realization that the only person that's gonna make me happy again and the only person that can actually do this is is me and like i have to do the work i have to do the work to feel happy that's a heavy realization because like you think that it's gonna you know you're gonna buy that thing or you're gonna move out or you're gonna get that new bed or you're like you're gonna get that new job and you think that it's all these like outer things that are making you unhappy but really it's probably something you gotta you know work on Within. I don't want to bet the deal. I don't want to let them get away and I bet the letting deal. So this section does not have any real lyrics. It's just pure art, pure gibberish. I put it in there because I was like, okay, I just need to fill this space with something because I'm going to put lyrics in there. And that was just like me improvising what I felt like it could sound like. And then I was on a Zoom call with Phineas and he was like, yo, weird idea, what if you keep this part? And then I was like, hey, that's interesting because it's like, it's just this weird kind of like, if you think about the topic of the song, like being a little bit sort of all over the place, having a twisted mind, feeling that, you know, you don't even know what's going on in your life. And then just suddenly like breaking out in like stuff that isn't even words. So when Phineas, he was like, you should keep this. I instantly thought it was a cool idea. I get intrusive thoughts like burning my hair off, like hurting somebody I love, like does it ever really stop? Always after getting an intrusive thought, I felt I feel really scared for a long period of time. Like especially this like hurting someone, hurting somebody I love lyric was inspired by a trip I took to my sister's apartment when I was maybe like 18 and I went to visit her. But when I got to her apartment, I was suddenly really scared of like losing control and like maybe like doing something in that apartment and like hurting my sister. I feel like after getting an intrusive thought, it kind of lingers in a way because it's like, yo, okay, I just had this like weird thought of doing that and this and blah, blah, blah. Like it doesn't just like go away right away. If you don't know how to, you know, what to do with it. But now I know what to do with it. I know what to do with my intrusive thoughts. So I feel invincible. Like, I feel like, you know, I can get, I can get all the weird thoughts I, I wanna get because I, I know that they're not real. Pro tip to dealing with intrusive thoughts is knowing that you get like 80,000 thoughts a day or something and that this is just one of them, but it's a weird one. A thought is just a thought. It does not dictate who you are. It doesn't dictate who, what you're gonna do. And if you don't wanna do it, you just don't do it. That's how I've made it 
so far. When there's control, I lose it. Incredibly impulsive, so scared. I'm gonna end up doing something stupid, but I try to contain it. I feel like control is like the root of all anxiety. Cause like anxiety is like when you can't control something. Like when it comes to feeling like I don't have control over my own body, that's like a, that's a whole kind of other realization of like realizing that, oh my God, I actually don't have control over this body. Cause like this body is doing its own thing. Like I'm re up here, but like this body is just like, flesh and bones, like it could belong to anyone and it can do stuff that harms you. Oh, it gets so draining. It's like my heart is failing. Every night I'm contemplating. My inner voice is saying tough. So I try to brush it off. I try to brush it off. The main thing that keeps me going nowadays and kind of draws me back to reality when I'm like, let's say, when I'm at night and I'm contemplating everything in life and then like my heart just starts beating really fast and I'm like aware of my heartbeat and then I'm like, oh my God, Marie, you're gonna die. The main thing that kind of grounds me is my dog. And she's here and I'm, I have my foot on her head right now. She is the best. Every single night, I usually get a weird feeling that I'm never gonna wake up. But then I'm like, my dog is probably gonna wake up. So therefore I'm gonna wake up. And then I'm like, I just start, like I just call her and then she lays next, like not, she doesn't go up in my bed, but like she's on the floor next to my bed and I can hear her breathing. And then, then I'm like, okay, I can just listen to her breath and just, and kind of just like, remember that she is here. And, and then I just like fall asleep to her breathing, which sounds kind of weird now that I'm saying it out loud. I think the dogs can like smell like your hormonal changes. Like they have like an insane sense of smell. Like if I cry or if I'm like being upset, like my dog is just like, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit right next to you right now. Cause like, I can't do anything, but I feel like this is gonna help. Like, I swear to God, she can smell my sadness. Dogs can smell sadness.